Welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff. Today we'll look at managed versus unmanaged switches and whether to PoE or not to PoE. That is the question. First, a few definitions. An unmanaged switch is a basic device that connects to the Ethernet devices together to communicate. The configuration is fixed by the manufacturer, so there is no customization on your part. You plug it in and it works. Since there are no features, these are cheap to buy and great for home users with simple needs. A managed switch gives you the ability to monitor and shape traffic. You can configure just about everything. You can do port mirroring, redundancies, you use the QoS or quality of service to speed up traffic and create VLANs or virtual networks to isolate your Internet of Things. PoE means power over Ethernet. PoE lets you power devices over Ethernet cables if the devices allow it. But you have to pick out a PoE switch that fits your needs. Typical PoE devices are surveillance cameras, Wi-Fi access points, voice over Internet protocol phones, and so on. So to start this process, we need to ask ourselves, do we need a managed switch? Well, to decide that, first we have to decide how complex our network is going to be and whether this is going to be a hobby, improve our skill set, or do we just want it to work? If you just want it to work, uh, we should just buy a dumb switch and call it a day. If it's a, more of a hobby, what are the cost confinements? What is the spouse approval factor? And if this is to improve our skill set for work, we need to define which hardware we want to work with. Now, network complexity means which devices are we going to use? And so, of course, we need to have a Wi-Fi access point or two for internet access, but are we also going to have VOP phones, cameras, and use VLANs? If we're going to be using lots of smart devices, do we need support for Thread, Zigbee, or Bluetooth in our access points? Not every manufacturer provides this. For our location, we're going to be running Ethernet lines through our 120-year-old house. We'll have multiple networked video cameras. We'll have about 50 Internet of Things devices, i.e. lights, switches, LED strips, floodlights, buttons, garage door opens, window, window and door sensors, and doorbells. We'd like to create separate VLANs for the Internet of Things devices. We'll have two or three wireless access points or APs that we would like to create a mesh network with, with Wi-Fi and also Zigbee and Bluetooth if possible. So yes, the network is going to be complex, but are we willing to invest the money for it? So a simple switch that has no options and enough ports for our needs can be had for less than $100. One that has the right number of ports plus PoE can be had for under $200. But these usually don't have all the gigabit ports that we need. So that won't be an option for us. Once we get over $200, almost all the switches become managed and have gigabit ports. Now before we go on, we have a side question and that is to figure out how much power we actually need for PoE. So different switches have different power amounts, so we want to find one that definitely outputs enough power for our needs. A quick calculation is that our Anki C800 surveillance cameras consume about 12 watts per camera, so six cameras would be about 72 watts. And Aruba Instant On AP uses 13 watts. And if we get three of those, then that is about 39 watts. So in total, we'll be needing about 111 watts total output from the switch, plus some wiggle room for future expansion. Next, we need to have to look at what kind of PoE we actually need. So there are basically three types of PoE. So basic PoE, which supports 15 watts per port, PoE Plus, which supports up to 30 watts per port, and PoE Plus Plus, which supports up to 60 watts per port. Now, we could get away with just a basic PoE switch with the items that we have picked out, but I prefer the PoE Plus for extra power and extra flexibility in the future. We also want to switch with at least 12 PoE ports, 
Our plan is to use at least eight or nine of these ports currently. 12 PoE ports leaves room for adding three more devices in the future. Next, we need to look at the differences between layer two and layer three switches, and if we need a layer three switch. The main differences between layer two and layer three are that layer three switches can communicate outside of a network, can coordinate the communication between VLANs and LANs, they handle multiple broadcasting domains, and they keep a list of IP addresses to link to different subnets. We could spend an entire video on the differences between the two, so you're going to have to do some outside research on this. But basically, if you don't know the differences between layer two or layer three, then we don't have to worry about it. It doesn't matter. One final consideration before we get to the price is the GUI. Now, as a home or small business user, we want a pretty interface that is easy to use and we can figure out the basics fast. The go-to product line in this case is the Ubiquiti Unify, but some major innovations have been coming out from the big manufacturers. HPE now has its Aruba Instant Online, TP-Link has its Omana line, and Netgear has its Insight line. Though Netgear requires per device subscription after the first two devices. All of them have great GUIs. It seems the GUI has become a non-factor now in the decision-making process. So don't let that stop you. So now how much does a managed switch cost that meets our requirements for at least 24 ports, has enough power over PoE to power all our devices, our cameras, our access points, well, price-wise, for a switch, TP-Link Omada is on the low end in the mid-$250 range. Ubiquity Unify is at the high end at $379, and HPE Aruba comes in at slightly less at $350. They all provide the basic same functionality, so... But wait, before you start buying your Omada switch, we also have to think about the whole ecosystem. So for example, Aruba APs support both Bluetooth and Zigbee. So we have to ask ourselves, is this important to us? Now in a future video, we'll go in more detail about the differences between the Unify, Aruba, and the Omada, and which ecosystem is the best for us. Before you go though, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of the future videos, including the one comparing the Unify, Omada, and Aruba. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. And a special thank you to all my supporters who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you. How to pick a switch, Ubiquiti Unify, TP Link Omada, HP Aruba, always on.